Zenjik's job is to both create and inject the objects that your application's classes depend on. We've already learned how injection patterns tell Zenjik which objects to give to which classes, but how do we tell Zenjik how to create the objects that it needs to inject? One of Zenjik's main responsibilities is to fulfill dependencies with the correct type. For example, Zenjik should know which implementation to give a class that depends on an interface. This is known as dependency mapping. Dependency mapping is the binding of a type to an instance. In Zenject, this is accomplished using binding statements that are added to the IOC container. You'll recall that the IOC container creates and contains all of your application's objects. This binding statement tells the container to create an instance of player. As a result, it'll also need to create an instance of iWeapon in order to fill player's dependency. This binding statement tells the container that each class that depends on iWeapon should be given an instance of Pistol. The container will then use c -sharp Reflection to get a list of all of Pistol's dependencies, which it'll attempt to resolve recursively. As we can see, Pistol has a dependency on Bullet Factory. We'll need to add a binding statement to the container that tells it how to create the correct instance. If we don't add a binding statement for Bullet Factory, then our application will fail to start which is good because you wouldn't want your game to run with some object lingering in the code without its dependencies. Zenjik provides great validation tools that tell you when the container can't resolve a dependency and helps you track down the missing bindings. We'll talk about how to add bindings to the container, but first, let's look at the anatomy of a binding statement. In Zenjik, a binding statement consists of a call to the container's bind method. Contract type tells the container which type you want to map the instance to. It corresponds to the type that you used in your injections. In its simplest form, a binding statement tells the container to use c -sharp's new operator to create and inject a new instance of the contract type into each class that needs it. For more complicated binding scenarios, Zenjik provides a number of options that let you fine-tune the binding process. Each option has a logical default, so you don't have to call them all for every binding statement. The to method uses result type to tell the container which implementation of the contract type to create and inject. Its default value is equal to the contract type, so you don't need to call this method if you aren't specifying a subclass of contract type. Result type must, however, be a type that is equal to or derives from the contract type. The withID method allows you to uniquely identify your bindings using IDs. This is useful when you need multiple distinct bindings for the same contract type. All you need to do is pass the same ID into the inject attribute of the properties that you want to receive this particular injection. The ID can be a string, enum, or any other class that implements the equals operator. Zenjek supports multiple types of construction methods that are enabled by calling from, followed by the name of the construction method of choice. The default construction method is from new, which uses the C-sharp new operator to create an instance of the result type. Among the most commonly used construction methods is from instance, which takes an instance of result type that you pass in. You might recognize this from the hello world example found in Zenjex documentation. This is great for encapsulating dependencies that have more complicated setup logic. The last construction method we'll cover in this video is from factory which allows you to encapsulate creation logic even further with the use of factories. Factories are perfect for situations where the creation logic of your objects requires its own dependencies, which can be injected right into your custom factory. There are many other construction methods available, and most of them are very situational, so they won't be covered in this video. Zenject also supports the scope in which your objects are created by calling as followed by the scope. Scope determines how often an object should be reused across multiple injections. The default method is as transient, which tells the constructor not to reuse the same instance of result type. This means that a new instance of result type will be created for each injection. The as cache method tells the container to reuse the same instance of result type for each contract type injection. Similar to as cached, as single tells the container to reuse the same instance of result type for each injection of a type that result type derives from. This effectively makes your injection a singleton, hence the name. I'll admit that as cached and as single appear to do the same thing, so here's an example to illustrate the difference. Take these two classes, 
player and weapon. Player depends on an instance that derives from iAudio service, and weapon depends on an instance of the audio service implementation. We'll need to define a binding for each of these contract types. If we use a cached scope, then the container will create two instances of audio service, one for each contract type, which are iAudio service and audio service. But if we use a singleton scope, then the container will only create one instance of audio service. You'll likely be using as single for most of your bindings and resorting to as transient and as cached for special cases. The arguments method allows you to pass your own values into result types constructor. While you'll generally create separate binding statements for all of these arguments, it can sometimes be easier to just inject your own values. The when method allows you to define conditions for binding statements that restrict when they're used for injections. If the condition is true for the class requesting the object, then the injection will take place. Otherwise, it'll be ignored. The when injected into method is a helper method that lets you explicitly define which classes each of your binding statements are meant for. The copy into all subcontainers method will cause a binding statement to be inherited by subcontainers. Subcontainers are a more advanced topic that I'll cover in another video. So for now, just know that this option exists. The final option is the non-lazy method. Adding non-lazy to a binding statement causes the container to create an instance of result type at startup. This is important because the container creates objects lazily when they're requested by the classes that need them. But sometimes you need a class to be created immediately. Or you need to add a class to the container that is never injected and therefore would never be created. In these cases, non-lazy works wonders. Binding statements play a pivotal role in dependency injection. Knowing all the available options will help you get the most out of the bindings that you create for your application. This video is part of a series of videos that I'm doing on Zenject. In the next video, we'll learn how to use installers to add binding statements to the container. To join the conversation about Zenject or any other programming topics related to Unity or game development, feel free to join the Infallible Code public Discord server. Link in the description.